My life is one of my, my favourite parts because I know how much I'm going to love Underbroid. <laughs> and you're in the sunshine today. Oh, we've seen the pros doing it. Now you get to see uh, Muggins here doing it. Uh, Joe and I are going to try and get this end done while the baby sleeps. First up, we need to get the manifold off. So around the outside, we're going to keep about 100 mil off the outside uh, wall. So we need to fold everything up. So this zone, or this manifold, was kind of going off the plan, but also kind of going a bit freestyle because we changed a few walls up that end and where the shower is. This is different from the last pipe we used for underfloor heating about 10 years ago. This is Ali Pert, Al Pert. Basically, it's got an aluminium layer within the different cores or different layers of that pipe wall. So when you bend it, it's got memory. It holds itself in place, which is really good for doing the bends, but obviously it still can kink, which is the golden rule for what we want to avoid. That's good. A pair of these. There's so many O-rings. Hopefully that's not going to give us a weak point. So there's two O-rings on the internal bit, and one on the bit that sits inside. Then the next thing is where these pipes go down into the slab, you'll notice in the last part of the video, or last video, we put these formers, they're just like an elbow to hold your 90 degrees. You can get like a white conduit we would have needed over 50 of them and they're about three pound each um so i think between these to hold a neat set of pipes kind of coming up vertically and then wrapping that to give it uh kind of a bit of protection for the concrete slab i think that's okay vintage jason said we're gonna have to look after it so have you got got a nice line to go off there Well, that's one. It's cool in the troops, I think. Well, we've actually managed to do I've actually managed to get out here firstly <laughs> and we've managed to do our first snail coil as you can see um, in the lounge snug library change room whatever you want to call it um Rupert was meant to be awake for this in the papoose but he's sleeping Good. Well, we got one room done. I lost my helpers, so I can't really carry on with that because as much as I'm a uh, fairly independent DIYer, that is not something I really want to be doing because it's just it's like juggling spaghetti. So we can't do too much over here until I've cleared the space, but also I can't get all this screened out ready for insulation until we've built our front wall. Well, I'll tell you what, you didn't miss much today. 
uh, my brickwork is not uh, viewable or not entertaining at least not in a factual sense maybe in a comical sense so they're around the corner they're even both sides and I've just been trying to work out what I'm doing across the front I think I'm just gonna say uh, stay a brick below for finished floor level which means this outside course I can take off that common it's going to be a block high all the way along so it'll end up 65 mil or 75 mil below the rest of them and on the inside course I'll just do two rows of commons what I'm thinking then is when we do the concrete pour I will fix down a 75 mil timber really nice straight piece of timber to that inside course so we've got something to shutter the concrete same on any other doors I think that's the easiest way to do it. I can do the outside bit uh, as and when I need to. Another day, another zone. Onto the study. Yay. Work will be lie, done. It's one of my, my favorite parts because I know how much I'm going to love Thunderbird. <laughs> and you're in the sunshine today. Look at this, it is, it's getting somewhere. It's like a whole little army of snails down this end now. So two loops, one zone for this room. Dad and I have been doing some mapping out a few of the walls we changed. So that is the study and toilet. No, no, it's just study. Toilet is that one, which is on the same as this little hallway out to the back. And then finally, we're just doing this one now. So. That's what we've been up to that end, but then lunchtime, up until lunchtime, we were building our front door. And isn't it looking smart? So, believe it or not, built some steps, even got a little gravel entrance now. So this is a thermo block at the bottom, two commons. So we're now 75 millimeters below finished floor level. I'll put a block of timber in there on the inner leaf, screed up to that with the slab. So we can then remove that, fit our door in the future, and it should all be hunky-dory. And what this means now is this weekend, I can screed away and get all this sand where we want it. Hopefully I've got enough. I'm going to use some builder's sand, uh, building sand, just to fill up a couple of the low spots. And then I can get all this insulation down. That's the only thing stopping us from getting six more loops of underfloor heating down this weekend. And then our priority next week, well, there's a lot still to do all that blocks and shuttering for reveals uh, and door thresholds but we must get all the reinforced steel in because we are really up against it now we're looking at uh 10 days ish for slab haven't got a date yet but i've got a week commencing type date nervous times nervous times all right let's get this fitted last one Saturday morning, ready to roll. All right, send it all the way down towards me. Over that drain. We're running out of space. Front door's in, got steps. We're backing ourselves up onto the kitchen now. Okay, let me get rid of this mixer. Mixer needs to go in the pantry. I think that 
that insulation up. It's going to be a bit foggy. All right, this one should be four meter wide, so we'll fold it out, cut the hole for the drain, yeah? And then we'll push it all the way to that side. Or will we? No, we'll do it that way, and then we can stick all of those black bits from the last section onto this one. Hey folks, welcome back. It's the big barn build and it is a miserable Monday morning. Uh, we may start, but let me show you what we're up to because we've got exactly one week left for the big pour. Uh, I'm getting a little bit nervous, I won't lie. Our first job of the week is to continue with our record breaking world's largest shower curtain and uh, get the whole front because it's just come in all over the weekend. Look, just miserable. And if we're kneeling down, putting underfloor heating and everything in we don't want that so we put a wire along the top we're going to take it to the halfway point and then basically have a pair of curtains that way when the concrete pump truck comes and they need to boom in we if we need to we can take that out but we do need to be able to keep the whole thing wrapped during the concrete stage uh, and it just feels a bit warmer when it's not blowing a hoolie in here we'll But while we get on with that, I'll show you how Faith and I left it on Saturday afternoon. So the front is now fully insulated up to the point of the front door. And then look at this, probably a sheet and a half, a uh, sheet and a half short of finishing the whole thing. We didn't want to do a complete patchwork effect, but we can definitely get closer. And I've got some 100 mil and old 25 mil boards up in the barn. I think we can get away with not having to buy any. When I bought these, I was buying nearly 200, so I could get a really, really good deal. If I just pop down the merchants now, these are probably like 60 quid, um, whereas we paid, I think, 39, 40. So um, if we can get away without buying them at full price, we want to be able to do that. We are now catching up at the front. What we can't do is this, well, these two bays. This one, we've just run the flow and return in for the heat pump, but it's getting foamed in. So we just need to finish insulating that little trench that we've cut through the PIR. And where I've core drilled it through that outside wall. So that we can finish tomorrow. But those two come straight out of the manifold in a different direction. So for now, we can come straight through uh, the laundry room and toilet here through the doorway and then off. First job is to spray out all the walls so we know what's what. Come on, here Up to the door, yeah? Another day, another loop. We are getting there with the heating, but we're definitely gonna come up short. We 
we've just been through. I don't know quite where we went wrong. We haven't really added anything extra. Uh, we have moved the manifolds to slightly different positions, but even so, I think we're gonna have to get another 200 meters of pipe, which is a bit of a shame. We should be able to get that quite easily. So we've got a 300 meter coil on there now. I'm gonna pull that through. Joe's gonna help staple that down into there. We've got an off cut here, which is enough for the hallway. And then we're gonna to have to just work through it. But of course, we've still got those two big annex bedrooms and bathrooms to do. So we can leave them till last, I think. Uh, there's plenty to get on with. So that has got to come. Right. So this is going into Annex living room, port five, port six. What I'm going to do now, all the adhesives turned up, is get some of the uh, upstand myosin in. And this is, I went and found some that's a good bit thicker and more substantial than the normal uh, roll of foam you get with underfloor heating kits. And this will just give a bit more of an expansion break, but also um, a little bit more insulating. And I think this spray contact adhesive is the answer, because that's what I did yesterday. Right, another day, another task. And we're gonna continue, or I'm gonna continue with this sheeting to get this a little bit more weatherproof in here. Fortunately, we're at the point now where a lot of our green membrane is down, it's taped up to the DPM. Therefore, if a little bit of rain gets on top of it, the concrete's just gonna go straight on top of that anyway, as long as there's no huge puddles. It was more a case of keeping the moisture off the insulation. But as the concrete goes down, we wanna make sure that we can control as much as we can to control the environment in here. So I managed to get hold of this stuff. This is scaffold sheeting, like you would wrap a whole building in. And rather than doing tarps or some sort of membrane, this is obviously reinforced and it's clear. So we've got some natural light for now until we start getting the walls up. And I found it in three meter. So three meter is enough to sort out on the side elevations up to the eaves. And then along the 
end gables where you can see how high it gets up there. So that's keeping most of it off and the wind out. But really, we, we're going to look at putting another panel above that um, next week. Even if we just get the wire up, we can then call it on the day. If it's a day like today, we just won't bother. But if we need to, we can get a ladder and we can just cable tie on an extra section up there. So I'm going to continue this one. They're 50 meter. Are they 50? I think they're 45 annoyingly. So they don't quite do two sides. Uh, but it's nearly all of it. So I'm going to tack this one up. Once it's tacked up, then I'll come along with some battens and screw it in. So we've been battening to the top, middle, and then with some concrete screws, battening it against the block work at the bottom. Unfortunately, we're not quite going to be able to build the walls inside it. We'll have to take down a section at a time. Anyway, that's my morning task. I'd love to know where my stapler is right now. Done. That's pretty painless. I mean, I say done, I've just tacked it up with some kind of clout nails, but th this has got all those fiber, sort of um, fiber reinforced or whatever you call it, mesh in there. So that's um, not gonna tear very easily. So between now and getting the battens on, should it be fine? And I'll concrete screw the bottom like I did, obviously around the corner, I'll leave the need to cut or just fold it back on itself. And now, just need to, I haven't cable tied or done anything in the middle yet. The concrete guys are gonna bring a pump with a big boom. That's gonna be boomed in through the gable end and then about halfway through the building, drop down and be handheld. So therefore, I kind of need to leave that open. Uh, for now, Tom just bungeed it up yesterday, which kind of works fine. The plan is to get the, uh, the concrete slab down in the next week and then uh give it a couple of days once it's cut uh, and get it covered and then start loading all of our timber in here that is going to be intentionally arriving about three days after the concrete so we can get it straight in here and straight to work um, we're gonna have to invest in quite a lot of floor protection which is just um, a necessary purchase to make sure because it's polished concrete to make sure that it's preserved while we frame over it and um, there's certain areas where we can be a little bit less careful um, one being that whole garden room patio area because we can um, we can afford to we probably will cover it anyway um, but it's not going to be a polished floor there so in some respects that could be our tool area where we've got heavier tools and stuff but before i go and have my coffee uh, let me give you an update on where i've got um, with tom over the past few days Thursday now, so Thursday, Friday is my solo days, um, and then it's going to be later in the week next week uh, for the concrete pour. So in the end, I ordered 15 mil myotene, and that's thicker than most people use, but I just felt like it was going to give a bit more insulation. We're going to use slightly wider studs anyway, so it'll all be covered. And on the outside wall, we're counterbattening for a service void, so there's no chance of it showing. Uh, so that's the upstand done. I've used spray adhesive for everything. It worked far better than anything else. So that's stuck onto the DPM. And then this is then stuck on. Uh, so everything's completely covered. Concrete will come up to the top of the black or well, black and white, about the same height. I've the double sided tape stuck on uh, a 100 mil DPC there, which is obviously much harder wearing. And I think that's what I'm gonna have to do everywhere. Um, and it should hold up to everything we need. So a bit more sticking to do. I've ordered more myosine because everywhere we've got pipes and steels, they've all got to be wrapped, including all the stuff coming up to the manifolds. But yesterday, Tom put in a shift on the walls. We've, we ended up knocking out so many of these walls because, just because of the threshold details. Um, so he managed to get all of these in 
the this is where we had it, it was all up at this height so we had to take all the blocks off we put in an ad additional layer of thermo blocks and then uh coursed it up with therm with regular commons so that now it sits 75 millimeters lower than the finished slab two external doors over there they are instead of knocking it all out and rebuilding it tom um cut those out so they're done they're cut down to the right threshold height and i think that means doors are done apart from i've got to pick up some more bricks today and lay a course in on top of these thermos so we've done an additional course of thermos in a few places we're spending so much money on the glazing especially the big lift and slide doors that it just makes sense to get a thermal break under the whole sill um although that this is outside of the kind of envelope of the house so we still want to make make the most of those doors being that they are you know premium product uh, we have almost finalized the doors and we'll be sharing a bit more on the glazing in the future but that's obviously the biggest expense on the whole build and it's taken quite a few quotes and back and forth and things like that to um iron out the details and finally for our most unconventional part of the build uh so far well certainly the oversight prep is this uh it's not a foot bath it looks like the sort of thing you you know sanitize your feet for biosecurity um or going into a swimming pool it's not underneath here we've actually cut out the insulation to uh reveal this meter by 600 void which would have, was the full depth of the insulation and we decided to take all the thermos that were temporarily being used on the pool side we chipped them off because they come off quite easily and we've put all 10 side by side in here i don't know if i filmed it or not but um they've basically those 100 mil thermos are in there so and the reason for that is the footing of the staircase that comes up here which may well be a cast in on-site concrete um stairs or it might be timber but it will be self-supporting and not have structure underneath it so all of the weight of it really kind of bears down on the first couple of treads and what, how it's attached up the top uh, so we decided to do that so there's a thermal break now underneath that whole pad and now when the concrete's poured it will fill that space all the way up to 150 so I, I, that's about a 250 mil uh, structural sort of slab footing there and then underneath here is all the well compacted type one anyway so so it was kind of a made up on the spot detail but it's there if we don't need it we don't need it but if they need to put in some big rebar or resin fix some um, dowels into the the bottom tread we've got that and we know that there's no underfloor heating there and then it's a very very substantial chunk of concrete yet it's not a cold spot and we've done that elsewhere so you see here these were 100 mil thick thermos we've cut them in um to sort of half block size pads they're bed down uh, flush and therefore we know that if we put our oak post here although it's not supporting it's not just sat on the sla insulated slab it bears, bears all the way down but again it's thermally broken and i'll probably put everywhere we put all these um expansion cuts in or control cuts I'm actually going to score like a little square around that footing, slightly smaller than the oak post will be, so that it's not going to create a crack off those corners. I think that's it. I can't really do anything else on the underfloor heating until that pipe arrives. So it's more a case of just tidying up. And I've got no forklift because it's stuck in a bog in the top barn. Just want to make sure we've got all this space completely free so we can get pump truck in here, all the lorries down. The big dumper can easily move. Humpty Dumpty is um, is actually sold. Uh, a subscriber uh, locally is going to take him on and um, get him fixed. He's going to do, I think, if I read his email correctly, an engine conversion on it. And uh, so we just got to make sure we can get that loaded on a trailer soon. But there we go. That's uh, that's the update. I think that's the wrap up for this video. A jumbled mess as always. Uh, oh, look at this. You found the site protection. Not the dog, I meant the site protection cardboard. These are all cardboard sheets from packaging the roof panels, but I've managed to preserve them all. Because that's something we can bung down on the concrete floor to keep it safe. We'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. 
We'll see you next time.